Hey, what's going on guys? So recently I got my hands on the new Ajuin Crane 2S. It's the newest gimbal from Ajuin and it's the successor to the classic Crane 2. I've been using this gimbal for the last few weeks now and I use it to create today's effect. First, I'm gonna go over how I created today's effect and then go into what I like and what I don't like about this gimbal and hopefully it can help some of you out if you're looking to purchase your first gimbal or maybe upgrading from an older one. But okay, with that being said, let's jump into how I created the effect. So for this effect, I shot one clip and I used the Crane 2S to get a nice and steady shot. I slowly walked forward until I got as close as possible because I wanted it to look like my camera is passing through the lens of the camera that my wife is holding. And this is the only clip that I shot since I'm going to loop the footage for this effect. So I was able to create this effect completely inside of Premiere and it's actually super easy to do. With the footage in a new sequence, I trimmed it to end right when the lens of the camera was facing me and was as close as possible. Then I made a cut in the footage at the point right as the camera started to turn and face me. Then I selected the shorter part of the clip and made a circular mask inside of the lens. I did this by going into the effect controls and under the opacity tab, I selected create ellipse mask. Then I checked the inverted box and turned off the mask for now so it's easier to adjust it. Next Next, I adjusted the mask to be slightly smaller than the inside of the lens. If you hold down shift on the keyboard and move your cursor slightly to the outside of one of the side points on the mask, you can click and drag to resize the mask. After I had my mask positioned where I wanted it, I made sure to turn on the mask path stopwatch and then went through and repositioned it to fit inside of the lens. And I didn't have to do this for every frame, I only had to do it for about every 3 or 4 frames so it didn't take that long. Once I was done with the mask, I went ahead and turned it back on, and now the glass part of the lens is masked out. I also increased the feather on the mask to about 100. Then I duplicated the longer part of the footage and extended the top layer to go about 5 frames over the shorter part of the footage. Then I keyframed the opacity on that top layer to go from 100% down to 0 over the course of those 5 frames. I did this so that the mask fades in and doesn't just pop up on the lens randomly. Then I selected all of the footage, right clicked and nested them together. Next I went to the beginning of the nested sequence and made a keyframe for the scale at 100%. Then went to about the halfway point and created another keyframe for the scale, this time at 120%, and then went to the end of the clip making one last keyframe and this one I increased the percentage of the scale until the lens of the camera was no longer in frame. I did this so as I'm pushing in with the gimbal, the footage is gradually increasing in scale and isn't that noticeable. I also came up and selected all three of those keyframes, right clicked and selected to turn them into Bezier keyframes. And now when I play this back, it looks like the camera travels through the lens. After that, I duplicated the footage and dragged the bottom layer over so it starts at the same time that the mask starts. And that's pretty much it, that's how I created the main part of the effect. I did quickly add on one finishing touch. I opened the effects tab, went into the distort folder, and added the lens distortion effect to the bottom layer. Then I increased the curvature to 100 and created a keyframe. Then as the camera pushes through the lens, I brought the curvature down to zero, creating another keyframe at that point. And this just makes it look as if the footage had a distorted look to it as if you're viewing it through a glass lens, and then that distorted look fades away as the camera pushes in and passes through the lens. And then I selected both of those keyframes, right clicked, and turned them into Bezier keyframes. And then after all that, I just duplicated my bottom layer a few times and repositioned each one of those to start at the same time as the mask, and that gave me a continuous loop. For my effect, I wanted the clip to get shorter every time it pushed in through the lens, so every time I duplicated my footage, I just shortened the clip a little so that it started farther along than the last one. If you do it this way, you do have to reposition your lens distortion effect on any clip that you shorten. And an easy way I did that was on the shortened clips, I deleted the lens distortion effect and then went to the first clip that I applied that effect to and just copied and pasted that onto all the shortened clips. But alright, so that's it, a quick and simple way to create the infinite loop effect. And so now I'm going to show you some more footage that I got using the Crane 2S.
All right guys, so now I wanna talk about the Crane 2S. When I first started using this gimbal, the first thing that jumped out to me was the build quality. It feels very well made and durable, and I like the new black and gold design on it. It gives it a nice stylized look. I also like the new carbon fiber grip handle. It's an updated version from the original Crane 2. And I like that the display on it is a little bit larger. It makes it easier to go into the menu and change any of your settings. They also added a new locking mechanism for all three of the axes. You can see right here, you just switch that over to lock and then you can now lock that axis. You can lock this one as well. And you also have one for the tilt. So if you're not using your gimbal and you set it off to the side, if someone were to accidentally bump this, your camera is not going to move around and get damaged in any way. And if you wanna transport this, you can easily lock those axes and then toss it in the backpack and then the gimbal won't be flopping around on itself. They also made the area where you mount your camera a little bit wider. I have my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K on here, and this is already a pretty wide camera to begin with, but then I went ahead and added on a full cage around the outside with a battery pack solution on the top with an SSD hard drive. So this is a pretty heavy payload that this gimbal handled with no problem at all. Usually if you want to mount a camera of this size onto a gimbal, you have to add like an offset plate and some counterweights on the outside. So it's pretty nice that this gimbal can handle a camera camera of this size straight out of the box. It also has a new quick release mechanism right here where you take this lever and push it down and it'll push this pin making it easy to just slide your camera straight off like that. You also now have the option to mount your camera vertically so you can get some vertical video. You would just mount it right here on this vertical mount plate and then you can get vertical video just like that. It makes it super easy. Uh, I don't think I would use that very often but it does come in handy if you want to shoot like social media stuff like Instagram stories or something like that. So it is a cool option to have if you're interested in doing that. You still have the focus wheel on the outside right here so that you can plug your camera into the gimbal and pull some focus that way. You have the joystick still right there to control the gimbal. You have the mode button to cycle through your modes. You have an on off button here, which is also your record button. And then you have your dial down here, which you can use to go into your menu and cycle through your settings that way. So this still uses the 18650 batteries, which is inside of the handle grip. You would just unscrew it like this. And that reveals your batteries inside. And then you would pop these out, throw them on a charger separately, and then charge those. You get the charger included along with the three batteries and these batteries give you about 12 hours of runtime. Now let me go over the different modes that this has. The first one is pan follow mode. So the gimbal will follow your pan wherever you go, but the tilt is locked in place. So that's pan follow mode. Then if you hit the mode button once, it'll go into lock mode, which locks the camera facing the point wherever it was whenever you went into lock mode. So that's lock mode right there. Then if you double tap the mode button, it'll go into POV mode, and this will follow your tilt and your pan. And then also, if you go this way, the camera will follow the gimbal's movement. So pretty much wherever you move the gimbal, the camera will follow in POV mode. Then you double tap one more time, and it goes to vortex mode, and now you can hold the camera straight out like that, and then do a barrel roll type movement. So that's a pretty cool option in vortex mode. And then if you hit the mode button three times, one, two, three, you go into go mode. And this is like a sports action mode kind of thing where you can do quick movements for like an action scene or if you're shooting sports, something like that. You can quickly move the gimbal around and follow the action. And the last mode is follow mode. If you hold down the trigger right here, it'll go into follow mode. And this is similar to POV mode. It goes with your tilt, your pan, but it doesn't follow the movement of the gimbal that way. It'll stay in place. So similar to POV mode, but follow mode is slightly different. And then you can also hit this trigger three times. One, two, three. And it'll go into selfie mode. So you can like vlog with this if you want to. It's pretty heavy or just spin it around to get the other direction. And if you hit it three more times, one, two, three. It'll spin it back to where it started. And those are all the modes on the Crane 2S.
So there is one thing about the Crane 2S that I wish was slightly different. Initially, this back motor is actually mounted up higher with an extension arm and it gets in the way of the screen on the back of the camera. It makes it difficult to see what you're shooting and when you're playing back your footage. It also blocks the buttons on the back of the camera and makes it a little difficult to switch through your settings. They do give you the option to remove the extension arm so that you can lower that back motor down out of the way. I wish though that they would ship it like this already so you don't have to do it yourself because when you remove the extension arm, you actually expose the cable that plugs into the back motor and I felt like I could accidentally pull this cable possibly damaging the gimbal so it would be nice if they would just ship it with it already mounted down there so you don't have to worry about doing that yourself. Overall though I think this is a great gimbal in that it's geared towards people who use larger cameras. This starts out at $600 US and I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to check that out for some more information. But alright guys that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.